a very nice turnaround in, in the situation. Of course, you, you say it's really due to uh, the welcome recovery and diamond prices, also stringent cost management. As we see those diamond prices continuing to recover, hopefully, do you think you'll be able to keep the costs down where they are at the moment? We are firstly very pleased with the cost turnaround that we have made to the tune of 165 million we've taken out of the cash base. We believe that it is sustainable and we're looking to now slowly grow, keeping the costs under control. For us, electricity is 3% of total, so we don't anticipate the electricity issues in the country significantly impacting on the cost base going forward. But it will have a little bit of an impact a going absolutely, forward. Absolutely. Llewellyn, just looking at the cost base, I mean, you're talking about cost cuts and you're quite stringent. Um, does that include uh, also uh, being quite uh, um, strategic about your employment base as well? In other words, have you been shedding jobs? We have managed to only shed jobs in the areas where we actually were taking losses, cash losses, even before the recession. We have not yet shed a job as a result of the recession, and prices for us have increased nicely. You know, demand at this stage is fairly strong. So touch wood, we don't anticipate as a result of the recession actually having to shed. Do you, uh, one can never say never. <laughs> Do you envisage diamond prices continuing to, to maintain these levels and improving even further? Because th there's a very uncertain outlook in Europe. Do you think that could have an impact on prices and demand going forward? Most importantly, we sell by tender. So we are price takers for our quality of goods, however. Demand is very, very strong at the moment. We anticipate it to remain firm. And prices have recovered to close to the 2008 levels. Well, where do you see demand coming through the most? I mean, you're talking about, uh, you know, you work on tenders. Is it mostly Asia? Because that's where we're hearing most of the demand is coming from. The U.S., of, although uh, they are a massive consumer of diamonds, things have started to look a little bit subdued. Certainly. Just looking at the tender information, the demand is coming from Hong Kong, China, India, mostly. And a little bit of an uptick from the States, but not a lot. So you also but this is, this is straight based on our tender information. We tend okay. not to actually make forecasts as to you know, exactly who's buying, who's going to buy. I'm now giving you an answer based on what is actually happening at tenders. Mm -hmm. Talk to us perhaps about your um, operations in Angola because there's some exciting developments there, particularly with the Luana mine, uh, Luana mine your Lorica and uh, the Falcoma mine under care and maintenance at the problem. But Luana is starting to grow quite nicely. We signed the contract with our partners on the 12th of May. In July last year, we informed the market that we have 3 million inferred carrots, 7 million in <laughs> indicated. So we certainly are looking forward to develop the mine going forward with our partners. You own about a third of that mine, is that right? We own about a third. Pricing we expect to be in a $300 carrot range. And we certainly are encouraged you mm -hmm. know, about our future in Angola at this stage after many, many years of difficulties. Mm. Well, Llewellyn, what about the rest of Africa? Because obviously, you know, Africa is looking uh, relatively robust. Would you be looking at any acquisition down the line? Because at uh, one point prior to the recession, of course, that's what most commodity-linked companies were talking about. We chose as Transex to stay in Angola and to solve our problems there. We had looks at other African countries, and we've decided now to consolidate firstly. We, f with the cash that we have available at the moment, we are in a position to actually explore other opportunities, and we are, <coughs> but we will only invest if they make our investment criteria. Future of your South African mines, that's um, Bakken and Richtersfeld? Last year we reported to the market that we have six years of life. This year we're also reporting six years. We're forecasting to produce about... Done that at a year. We, we are forecasting to produce 100,000 carrots again this year. And if we continue to make the productivity improvements, we probably will be there for a while still. Okay, looking at the overall global uh, economy, because many say that the global recovery um, is very, very fragile. You're talking about Asia looking relatively robust from a demand perspective. Also looking at the very strong rand, how are you factoring all of these things into uh, your business case going forward? Because although you started to see gr quite a great recovery, um, you also have to take into consideration that things could go pear-shaped from here. So how are you uh, positioning yourself? Just before the recession and through the recession, we took a very, very conservative view. And because we did that, we managed to not actually go to shareholders for cash, neither do we have to raise debt through this period. We are maintaining this position because we are not certain whether there won't be a second bubble. So for now, as I said, we will carefully investigate investment opportunities, but we are certainly not rushing to go there.